68 million years ago, across the semi-tropical plains of North America, a nightmare was roaming the land. Tyrannosaurus Rex, with a 10-plus ton body, a bone-crushing bite, and hyper-keen senses, this was the last predator you'd ever want to encounter. And the worst part? Its eyesight may have been 13 times better than ours, which means if it was looking for you, there was nowhere to hide. So if you suddenly woke up in late Cretaceous North America, what should you do? Obviously, any body of water is off the table. The monsters lurking beneath would swallow you whole in seconds. Heading south? Not a great idea either. Down there, you'd only run into the Abelosaurs. A group of terrifying theropods that were just as vicious in their own right. So, maybe, the safest bet is to head north. Colder temperatures, hopefully fewer dinosaurs. But if you actually traveled far enough north, deep into the snow-covered wilderness, you wouldn't escape the theropods. Because you'd run into another tyrannosaur. A beast that ruled the Arctic with a powerful grip. Or rather, a powerful bite. This was Nanukosaurus. But the craziest thing about Nanukosaurus isn't just that it existed. It's where it was found. One of the most remote and unforgiving places on Earth. Prince Creek Formation, Alaska. Hundreds of miles away from the nearest city. And it was here, in 2006, that a shocking discovery was made. Paleontologists stumbled upon fragments of a theropod skull, including a right maxilla, part of the skull roof, and a left nasal bone. These bones looked eerily familiar. They clearly belonged to a tyrannosaur. But there was just one problem. No one expected to find a tyrannosaur in the Arctic. At first, scientists thought it might be a known species, possibly Albertosaurus, Daspletosaurus, Gorgosaurus. Even if it wasn't new, this discovery was groundbreaking. It proved that tyrannosaurs weren't just rulers of the tropics, but could also survive in freezing environments. The reign of the tyrannosaurs wasn't limited to warm climates. They could dominate the frozen north as well. But then, something unexpected happened. Years later, as scientists prepared to analyze the fossil in detail, they realized something shocking. This wasn't just any known tyrannosaur. It was an entirely new species, a previously undiscovered genus of Arctic tyrannosaur. And because it was found in the far north, it was given a fitting name, Nanukosaurus, meaning polar bear lizard. The discovery of an Arctic tyrannosaur was already groundbreaking, but it raised an even bigger question. Could Nanukosaurus be one of T-Rex's closest relatives? Morphological studies suggest Nanukosaurus was strikingly similar to T-Rex, possibly the second closest North American theropod relative to the king just behind Daspletosaurus, which means Nanukosaurus may have been one of the direct heirs to the most terrifying dinosaur to ever live. But if that's true, where did it come from? That question remains unanswered to this day. But where did Nanukosaurus come from? There are two main theories. It descended from a North American tyrannosaur that migrated back to the Arctic. Or it came from an Asian tyrannosaur, which crossed the Bering Strait but never moved south. The second theory just got some compelling new evidence. This year, scientists discovered Asia Tyrannus, a deer-sized tyrannosaur from China, with a skull strikingly similar to Nanukosaurus. This has led some to speculate that Asia Tyrannus may be the direct ancestor of Nanukosaurus, a lineage of Arctic-dwelling tyrannosaurs. But there's a problem. While Asia Tyrannus looks like a mini version of Nanukosaurus, Nanukosaurus still shares more in common with T-Rex. S-shaped neck, T-Rex-like. Reduced arms, T-Rex-like. Thick, wide skull, T-Rex-like. 
a stockier build instead of the slender body of Albertosaurus, T-Rex-like. But it had some striking differences. Nanocosaurus was smaller than T-Rex. It had deeper, narrower teeth and more pronounced bony ridges above its eyes. And the most intriguing possibility? It may have been fully feathered. No direct evidence of feathers has been found on Nanocosaurus yet, but there's a key clue from Asia. Euteranus, a large tyrannosaur that lived in a cold environment, had a thick coat of feathers covering its entire body. Which means Nanucosaurus may have been feathered as well, to survive the dark, frigid Arctic winters. And if that's the case, it may have had light-colored feathers to blend into the snowy environment. From afar, in the middle of a blizzard, it may have looked like a gigantic polar bear. But one thing is certain. No one would mistake it for a polar bear when it got closer. But make no mistake, Nanukasaurus was no polar bear. It was much, much bigger. Initially, based on its original fossil remains, scientists estimated that Nanukasaurus was only about 6 meters, 20 feet long, and weighed nearly one ton, making it a medium-sized theropod. But then, something incredible happened. Recent studies suggest Nanukasaurus may have been three times larger than originally thought. Instead of being comparable to a smaller Carcharodontosaurus, it was actually closer in size to Albertosaurus, or possibly even bigger. If true, Nanukosaurus may have reached up to 9 meters 30 feet, long and weighed around 3 tons, making it the largest Arctic land predator ever. But that's still not the end of the story. Some scientists believe Nanocosaurus could have been over 10 meters 35 feet long, putting it on par with the largest known tyrannosaurs. If confirmed, this would mark one of the greatest size upgrades in paleontology history, from a mid-sized tyrannosaur to one of the largest ever. And at that size, no dinosaur in its Arctic ecosystem could escape it. But size wasn't the only thing that made Nanocosaurus terrifying. Because it had one of the most lethal weapons of all, its bite. Like all tyrannosaurs, Nanocosaurus had a massively built skull packed with powerful muscles designed to deliver an earth-shattering bite. But Nanocosaurus may have been even more dangerous than some of its cousins. Its skull wasn't just long, it was also exceptionally wide, more like the heavier, more robust members of its family, which means its bite force may have been on an entirely different level. But how strong was it exactly? Nobody knows for sure. Because Nanukasaurus remains are still too rare, no detailed bite force study has been conducted yet. However, here's what we do know. Similar-sized tyrannosaurs like Gorgosaurus, Despletosaurus, and Albertosaurus have bite forces ranging from 10,000 newtons to a staggering 40,000 newtons. That's 2.5 times stronger than the bite of the most powerful crocodile alive today. And Nanocosaurus was no exception. Whatever the exact number, one thing is certain. Anything caught in its jaws never stood a chance. But what truly made Nanocosaurus the most terrifying predator of the Arctic was how it killed. One bite, and flesh and bone were instantly crushed. One pull, and entire sections of its prey's body were torn away. Its bite force was so immense, the tissue and bone would have exploded on impact, creating catastrophic, gaping wounds. Like someone took a giant eraser and wiped out a whole part of your body in an instant. And if that wasn't terrifying enough, its teeth made the damage even worse. While smaller than T-Rexes, they were still gigantic by any normal standard. Over 10 centimeters, 4 inches long, curved to ensure prey stayed locked in place. Once it bit down, there was almost no escape. Its teeth also had fine serrations, allowing it to slice through multiple layers of flesh effortlessly. With a weapon like this, Nanukosaurus could kill, or at the very least fatally wound,
some of the largest dinosaurs of its time. So what dinosaurs ended up on its menu? Hadrosaurs, duck-billed dinosaurs, easy targets. Ceratopsids, horned dinosaurs, capable of fighting back, but not always successfully. Pachyrhinosaurus, the most frequently depicted prey of Nanukosaurus in media. In many portrayals, Nanukosaurus is shown hunting Pachyrhinosaurus in packs. But did it actually live in groups? There's no direct fossil evidence proving it hunted in packs. This assumption may have originated from older, smaller size estimates. But some scientists argue that living in groups could have been beneficial in the Arctic, making hunting easier and providing warmth in freezing winters. Whether solitary or social, Nanukosaurus was still the apex predator of the ice. But despite all its advantages, many juvenile Nanukosaurus still didn't survive. A somber reality reflected in the fossil record. But there's something even more terrifying than Nanukosaurus's fangs and claws. It's where it chose to live. Not warm forests filled with food. Not open plains where survival was easier. But the frozen, merciless Arctic. Where only the strongest could survive. And the craziest part? It could have left. It could have migrated south to escape the brutal winter. But it didn't. Nanukasaurus chose to stay through endless darkness, relentless blizzards, and bone-crushing cold that could kill anything unprepared. Winter temperatures averaged minus 3 degrees Celsius, 26 degrees Fahrenheit, turning the Arctic into a giant freezer. But that wasn't even the worst part. The real nightmare was the eternal darkness. 120 days without sunlight. 120 days of nothing but blackness. 120 days where prey nearly vanished, and one wrong move meant certain death. So how did Nanukosaurus survive in this frozen wasteland? Some scientists believe it had a secret weapon. A super sense of smell. Nanukosaurus may have had an even stronger nose than T-Rex. If true, it could track prey from kilometers away even with thick snow covering every scent, even if the freezing air dampened the smell, even if the wind blew the wrong direction, nothing could escape it. And if that wasn't terrifying enough, it may have had another deadly advantage. Its legs may have evolved to move perfectly across ice and snow. No sinking into thick snow, no slipping on frozen surfaces. A predator that could move silently, unseen like a ghost in the storm. Imagine being trapped in a raging blizzard. No tracks, no sound, no warning. Just two cold, unblinking eyes appearing from the mist. And then, everything fades to black. That was Nanukosaurus, a true monster of the Arctic. But if the Arctic winter was a brutal fight for survival, then summer was the season where Nanukosaurus reigned supreme. The endless darkness was gone, replaced by constant, never-ending daylight. For months, the Arctic sky never saw the night. And this was when Nanukosaurus became its most lethal. It was also the time when prey migrated north, bringing herds of massive dinosaurs from the south. But here's the fascinating part. While everything else came and went, Nanukosaurus was the only one that stayed here year-round. Edmontosaurus stuck to the coastal lowlands. Pacarinosaurus roamed the upland forests. But Nanukosaurus? It was everywhere. No matter where you hid. No matter the environment. If you lived in the Arctic back then, Nanukosaurus was always lurking. And that reveals a terrifying truth. The Tyrannosaur lineage didn't just dominate tropical jungles or vast plains. They evolved to conquer every biome, even the frozen north. But if you think Nanukosaurus only had to deal with other dinosaurs, think again. This region wasn't just home to dinosaurs, it was teeming with life. Primitive birds, marsupials, feathered reptiles, 
and dense forests filled with over 60 types of trees. But one entire group of animals was missing. No snakes, no crocodiles, no turtles or amphibians. Not a single cold-blooded animal could survive the Arctic. Only creatures that could generate their own body heat lasted here. And Nanukasaurus was at the top of the food chain. It wasn't just the largest carnivore in the region. It was the undisputed apex predator. Because its closest competition? At least 140 times smaller. No other predator was large enough to challenge it. Every other carnivorous dinosaur here experienced dwarfism, shrinking to half the size of their southern relatives. But not Nanukosaurus. It didn't just survive. It thrived, becoming the only true big-game hunter. And as summer arrived, its hunger only grew more insatiable. Prey had nowhere to run, no more darkness to hide in. Only Nanukosaurus and its merciless hunt. But despite all its power, dominance, and brutal hunting skills, Nanukosaurus never lived to see the end of the Cretaceous. 70 to 68 million years ago, just a two million year reign. It vanished before the asteroid wiped out T-Rex and the rest of the dinosaur world. But why? Did it fall victim to the very Arctic it once ruled? Or was there something else? Some unknown force, some unseen threat that led to the fall of the polar tyrant? No one knows for sure. Maybe it was the harsh, ever-changing climate a brutal cycle of life and death. Or maybe there's still a story untold, a secret buried beneath the eternal ice of the Arctic. One thing is certain, Nanukosaurus was the only Arctic Tyrannosaur to ever exist. It proved that even in the harshest place on Earth, dinosaurs found a way to rule. It was a legend, a prehistoric ghost, a predator we are only just beginning to understand. But have we truly uncovered its full story? Perhaps, somewhere out there, more bones remain undiscovered. Perhaps, beneath the deepest ice, there are still mysteries waiting to be unearthed. And one day, a new discovery could change everything we thought we knew. The story of Nanakosaurus may not be over yet.